Okay, so I got my brother who's the uh, genius when it comes to old engines and old transmissions. He's going to give you a uh, an overview of some early 40s Ford uh, transmissions and uh, he's going to put one together here. So if you want to go ahead and kind of explain what you got going on here. On the early Ford transmissions everybody wants the synchro mesh transmission and when identifying that transmission you have to look for this crease right here on this transmission. The 38 and older transmissions do not have that crease therefore it won't accept this larger cluster gear down into the bottom once it goes down in there. And not only that, the cases are about 1 16th of an inch in difference in length. This one's 8 and 5 sixteenths, and when I go to this one, it's 8 and a quarter. And that 16th of an inch difference, you cannot put these transmissions together, no matter what you do. You can probably try to shim it, but it's not going to work. And now I'm going to focus my attention on this one, because that's the one I'm going to do. The first thing we do is we're going to install the reverse idler. And these only go in one direction. You'll notice that there's a large wide part on the back side and a very skinnier part on the front side. Big to the back. That's how they're installed. And when I install them, I'm going to install just a little bit of silicone just to keep it from seeping a little bit. And I've already put a little bit of grease on there so I know that's good. And once I go in, I'm going to come back out and turn it a couple of times just to make darn sure that that silicone is all in there. Maybe just a little more. And after you get that all done and you're happy about where that is, then you got to line up your little hole. And once your hole is lined up, she's good to go, don't touch it. So now that we got the reversed gear shaft installed with a little bit of silicone inside the casing and round and round, it's all good. We got to make sure that the retaining pin goes through and nice and it's perfect. Now we got that, we're established, leave it, don't touch it, and we'll move on to the next stage. Now the next thing we need to do is install the counter shaft or the cluster gear. And it's very important when you buy a brand new cluster gear. They always have a different way of securing the thrust washer. This one takes four little pins and you have to get this one to match your cluster gear. And if it isn't, they're all different and every one I've seen four or five different ways that they put that and it has to lock on there. Once you know that you got that one in there and putting it in temporary, you want your end play to be around the eighth hour in play or just not too excessive in play is the big thing and I found on these new ones you don't need another shim so now we'll install it and it's a very very simple way to do it once you put your first thrust washer down in there I cut myself a dummy shaft that it's temporary and I know that this one here we will push it out when I push the other one in and it's just a little tiny bit longer than the counter shaft itself. And it's just to hold everything together once it's in there and it won't pop loose. So then installing the counter shaft, just get it in here and you'll notice that there's two sizes of bearings. A big one and a small one. So the small one goes in first and it's big to the back. Now we can install this thrust washer. Now everything's there. We put our little dummy counter shaft pin in there. Now you can just get her in there without pushing everything too bad, far out on there, and just slide her into place. Yeah. 
go and it's that other darn thrust washer that's hanging up. And there you go, all the way there. And then push it all the way down to the bottom and then we'll be ready for the next. Now we're ready to put the main shaft and the input shaft in. Now on these shafts that have a slip yoke on the back for is a completely different second gear than if it's a fixed yoke or a torque tube. These gears on the back where the thrusts are different, you'll notice that one has a cut through it. That one takes a thrust, a special thrust washer. And when it goes together, that's, that's its action. They may work on one of these other style, but I haven't tried it. Because that's the style on here. And if you notice, it just has a thrust right on the very back. There's no, there's no extra little thrust washer there itself. But these are simple to put together. They won't have any issue. Just make sure you have your snap ring in place. Then we're ready to put things together. Now when, now when installing, your first and reverse, come on, come on, there we go, they go together like that, tight together. You'd think that it would be the other way, but it isn't. That's the way they go. Now, also too, one more quick thing to know on your rear bearing sling or uh, these are important because they go on one direction they do not go this way there's a cup there's a cup that cup goes towards the gear and this little groove here that goes onto the teeth go through there and what it does is once your bearing is in it'll let just enough little oil to get past this little slinger therefore you won't prevent any starvation on that rear bearing so we can put them together why that counter shaft was dropped down to the bottom is to get your input shaft in. Now that it is, we won't have any problems whatsoever. pushes in nice and easy. Magic. So now that we got the main shaft and the input shaft put together and they're real, real nice, I'm just going to temporary one bolt to hold it into place and the same on the back end. 
to hold that bearing into place. Just one bolt. And then we'll put the counter shaft. So now we're ready to install the counter shaft pin. Now we know we need that hole to the back. We can install this from the front. It's okay. So what we're going to do, this one I lined up by turning the transmission upside down. The counter shaft fell towards the main shaft and the input shaft. And then I sort of wiggled it, lined up perfect in there. And we should be able to put everything together. replaces that and that's just about done as simple as that so what I normally want to do poke it out a little further and let's put some silicone in these little holes there too as well a little dab we want to go all the way around don't want to miss any spots because it's gonna Probably leak. If it's going to leak, it's going to leak here. The shaft. Same thing. There. Now we're going to place. Right up our hole. They turn easy in there. That's it. I like to smooth this out a little bit. On the back side here. Our pin will go in this direction. It's not quite lined up there just right. through the hole. And once you drive this in from the right hand side to the driver's left, bound it through, locks both pins together and that's it. We're ready for the two gaskets on the rear and front in retainer and that's it. You're done. Put some oil in it, put the top on, good to go.